Good afternoon and welcome back to Thoro Newspaper Analysis. I hope all of you are keeping well. Today is 12th of August and this entire video series it's brought to you by Law Seeker. Let's quickly head to the agent of today. So for the editorial segment this is our article the title of which is In Demolition Raj the High Courts as Beacons. This was published in The Hindu and uh, this is essentially an opinion piece where the author is questioning the silence of the supreme court with respect to the new violence and the subsequent demolition of the houses of as per the government those who were involved in the entire demolition activity without following the procedure that is notices were not given and the due course of law was not followed so the author is saying that it is time that the constitutional court which is the guardian of the constitution of india should have acted and the author has welcomed the observations that were made by the honorable high court of punjab and haryana so what are those observations and what essentially is uh, the point of reasoning that the author has adopted for substantiating his uh, uh, his opinion that is going to be the scope for today's discussion secondly we have a look at important news updates and thirdly we deal with the legal news updates for the day So let's start with the article and let's start with the why of this article first as in what is an issue so if you're familiar with uh, the entire new gurugram violence case then this is going to be easy for you to understand but for those of us who are new here's a recap of the story so far briefly uh, so on 31st of july there was this rally which was carried out by the vishwa hindu parishad in nu and that rally was obstructed there was stone pelting by uh, the other community and then as a result communal violence it uh, erupted and uh, the communal tension it also erupted following this uh, the state government it uh, the haryana government it ordered demolition of uh, houses of those that uh, it suspected to have been involved overnight and without notices that is and without conducting any sort of inquiry so uh, it did not follow the due course of law now following this episode the punjab and haryana high court it took so motu cognizance of this matter that is to say it moved the machinery of the law on its own motion and uh, it stayed the demolition outrightly and then secondly the high court made certain hard hitting observations the core of it was that it raised the question as to whether this act of demolition whether it was ethnic cleansing so here the author is welcoming these comments made by the punjab and haryana high court and it is also kind of questioning the silence that the honorable apex court has maintained on this order and uh, it is said that it is time that uh, the governments who move the machinery of the state and the law and order machinery in this manner without regard to the law and order then those uh, governments should be questioned and uh, they should be made uh, answerable because power corrupts but absolute power it corrupts absolutely so in this light let's understand the observations that were made by the honorable high court of punjab and haryana at the very outset and then we dive into the opinion piece so the punjab and haryana high court has said that uh, the issue which arises from this entire episode where there was a uh, demolition orders and uh, it is whether the buildings belong to a particular community they are being brought down under the guise of law and order problem and uh, an exercise of ethnic cleansing it is being conducted by the state so this was a question which was posed by a division bench of uh, justices uh, gs uh, sandwalia and we have justice uh, harpreet kaur jeevan so these uh, were the, uh, the some of the remarks further the bench said that it is in circumstances like these that we are constrained to issue notice to the state as it has come out to our notice that the state of haryana it is using force and it is demolishing buildings on account of the fact that some riots have occurred in gurugram and in new districts the court further observed we are of the considered opinion that the constitution of india it protects the citizens of this country and no demolition as such it can be done without following the procedure which is prescribed in law so these were some of uh, the remarks that were made or observations that were made by the high court so let's now get to the author's opinion piece 
the author essentially uh, is uh, saying the same that uh, in the districts of gurugram and nu in haryana there have been clashes between the hindu and the muslim communities people have been killed properties have been damaged and as a result communal tension it is running high in these areas so here a legit question might arise in our mind what a good administrator would have done so good administrator would have moved in to restore the law and order situation to maintain peace arrest those who are you know culpable the culprits and commence the legal process of charge and prosecution it would have housed those who are left out on the street without their properties but what has happened in haryana and a similar episode was also witnessed in up in the state of uttar pradesh that follows a altogether opposite course of uh, actions and uh, here the author has said that uh, where in such a situation where do the courts sit courts the constitution court especially the higher judiciary who are the guardians of the indian constitution was supposed to protect the rights which are flowing from the constitution rights of the people where do these courts sit so to cite an example of the supreme court the author is bringing in the episode of uh, the state of up and it says that uh, when the bulldozers in uh, the state of up they were ramp- rampaging the supreme court of india it was moved and the supreme court's response it was rather tepid because uh, the court said that uh, the law it was taking uh, the court uh, curing the government say that uh, these were illegal constructions and that the law was taking its course and then the supreme court stopped by making a generic sort of an observation saying that all procedure should be followed but the author is arguing that why didn't the honorable apex court rather put really hard hitting questions as to whether it is cleansing of a particular community or ethnic cleansing then whether you're targeting one community and uh, why is uh, the procedure of law not followed as in why inquiries were not conducted notices were not issued and what about the other illegal construction that is or illegal occupation that is already there so these are some of the hard hitting questions and the states should be made answerable and in case there was no specific answer or satisfactory answer then strict action should have been taken for instance the state could have been asked to pay interim compensation or to rebuild the houses or and maintain of course the law and order situation but unfortunately that did not uh, happen in that episode and similarly uh, it has been uh, argued further that uh, the supreme court it has not uh, taken a so much of cognizance of this entire episode and also the author has cited a couple of instances one is that there has been a repeated extension which has been given to the director of the enforcement directorate if you remember a couple of days ago we did a tna story on this matter as well that uh, the tenure of the ed director has been extended but the court has said that no further extension is going to be given and further the author also loops in or brings in uh, the entire issue of uh, article 370 and its dilution the assam accord the amendments to the citizenship amendment act amendment act uh, so all of these uh, issues have been brought forth to argue that it is time that the constitution court the higher judiciary the guardians of the constitution of india the protectors the watchdog of the rights of the people of our country the citizens they should act and now coming to the uh, the observations that have come from the honorable high court of punjab in haryana these have been welcomed and uh, they've been stated that uh, these observations they were very much needed to hold the the act the those actors of these uh, orders of demolition to be held accountable and it addresses the very core principle which is that power tends to corrupt but absolute power it corrupts absolutely and this was of course done by the court on its own motion so that's a welcome state but uh, commentators the author further adds and that uh, public opinion makers they've asked two very uncomfortable questions which is could not the supreme court have taken so much action why is it that no one approached the supreme court 
and the answer the author cites a uh, bob dylan song which is also one of my favorite songs is uh, that the answer my friend it is blowing in the wind and further he has cited justice vivian boss in uh, the judgment of state of west bengal versus anwar ali sarkar wherein he says that the law of the constitution it is not only for those who govern or for the theorist but also for the bulk of the people for the common man for whose benefit and pride and safeguard the constitution has been written and now with this let's proceed further and now we proceed to the national news category for today and this is our very first update so this is uh, in fact a very important update i'm sure in the last uh, couple of hours you must have seen a lot of activity on our social media feeds where you know we've seen a couple of articles opinion pieces memes and tweets around this particular update new criminal laws they are proposed in the parliament of india the union home minister shri amit shah he on friday which is yesterday introduced the following three bills in the lok sabha which is the lower house of the indian parliament the house of the people and these bills they are to replace these three important laws that constitute the criminal legal system of our country the proposed bills are first we have bharatiya nyay sanhita bill 2023 this particular bill it seeks to replace the indian penal code secondly bharatiya nagrik suraksha sanhita bill 2023 it seeks to replace the code of criminal procedure and thirdly we have bharatiya saksha bill 2023 this bill seeks to repeal the indian evidence act now justifying the purpose of these amendments the union home minister stated that this is to provide speedy justice and for creating a legal system which addresses the contemporary needs and the aspirations of the people so that we no longer have the colonial era uh, criminal justice uh, which is uh, you know driven by these laws which are uh, of colonial era and in order to respond to the new changing dynamics of the law and the social needs of today's time these amendments have been proposed now as far as the bharatiya nyay sanhita is concerned it uh, has provisions uh, that uh, seek to repeal the sedition law however this is going to be replaced by a section which is section 150 which uh, has penal sanction for acts which endanger sovereignty unity and integrity of our nation this bill it also has provisions for awarding maximum capital punishment for crimes such as mob lynching and rape of minors also uh, in case you have been in touch with ipc and especially the theories of crime and the jurisprudential aspects and essence of punishment the theories of punishment i'm sorry then you must have noticed that there is there has been a repeated recommendation of a lot of authors that we should have community service as a form of punishment here in our country as well so that has been addressed to or catered to in the this particular bill because if you have a look at section 4 clause f i believe of the proposed bill there you can find a mention of community service as the sixth form of punishment for petty offenses uh, a category of defamation being one of those offenses and there are a couple of other offenses as well section 207 section 200 of the proposed bill i i believe are two of those sections where community service is proposed as a form of punishment now this bill it also lists new offenses we have uh, the offense of armed rebellion and we have subversive activities separatist activities and activities which endangered the sovereignty or unity and integrity of our nation also here i would like to make a mention and uh, bring to all of you all's attention that uh, we've made a detailed video on this particular amendment and uh, the link of the same will be made available in the description of this video the video went live today itself kindly go ahead and i would highly encourage all of you to please uh, have a look at the video in this video you can have uh, access to the salient features of these bills you can have a comparison of the structural changes that uh, 
these bills propose from the current law that we have and lot of other things as well moving on to the next update india succeeds in reducing emissions rate by 33% over a period of 14 years india's greenhouse emissions rate it has dropped by a faster than expected 33% in a span of 14 years and the reason for the same is uh, the growth in generation of renewable energy and forest cover increase this has been stated by two officials who are privy to the latest assessment which was made for submission to the united nations the report's finding it showed india well on its way to meeting its commitment which was uh, made to the united nations convention on climate change to reduce emissions intensity by 45% from a period of 2005 by 2030 india's rate of emissions intensity which is the total amount of greenhouse emissions emitted for every unit increase of gdp it fell by 33% from a period of 2005 to 2019 the rbi imposes monetary penalty on four cooperative banks the reserve bank of india it has imposed monetary penalties on four cooperative banks one of which is uh, in the state of bihar while the other three they belong to the state of maharashtra and the reason for these penalty imposition is the deficiency in regulatory compliance these bills are tapindu urban cooperative bank limited islampur urban cooperative bank limited mahabaleshwar urban cooperative bank limited and the fourth is mangal cooperative bank limited a monetary penalty of rupees 1 lakh it was Im imposed on the first bank which is tapindu urban cooperative bank limited which is in patna the reason for the same is the non compliance with the directions which were issued by the reserve bank of india on exposure norms and statutory and other restrictions as far as islampur urban cooperative bank limited which is in maharashtra so as far as that is concerned it was penalized with rupees 2000 uh, rupees 2 lakh for non compliance with certain provisions of the banking regulation act of 1949 and certain provisions of the reserve bank of india no your customer directions 2016 and also the non compliance of maintenance of deposit amounts the mahabaleshwar urban cooperative bank limited which is also in maharashtra it was also penalized with rupees 2 lakh for non compliance for contravention non compliance for contravention of certain provisions of the Banking Regulation Act of 1949 Airtel Payments Bank it launched India's first eco-friendly debit card Airtel Payments Bank it has become the first Indian bank to launch a debit card which is made from eco-friendly material This move it aligns with the bank's commitment to sustainability within the financial sector the debit cards they will be made from a material which is often referred to as an eco friendly material it's non inflammable it is called rpvc the adoption of this material will impact the environmental preservation in the following three ways so as far as carbon emissions is concerned each batch of 50000 rpvc cards they will reduce carbon emissions by uh, for uh, of 350 kgs now hydrocarbon uses as far as that is concerned production of rpvc cards it will result in a 43% decrease in the consumption of hydrocarbons and thirdly the bank will be able to conserve as much as 6.6 million liters of water per batch of rpvc cards renowned author hari narke he passes away in mumbai renowned author and the vice president of samta parishad hari narke he passed away in mumbai at the age of 70 after suffering a heart attack he was uh, the professor of mahatma phule chair at savitribai phule pune university 
and he was a former member of the Maharashtra Backward Class Commission. He was also a member of the Ranganath Pathare Committee, which was formed to collect evidence to prove Marathi as a classical language. Recalling uh, him as uh, someone who was at the forefront of the fight for OBC rights, the Deputy Chief Minister of the state stated that Mr. Narke, he was not only a scholar, but a foot soldier for all those who belonged to the weaker and the marginalized sections of the society. Karnataka State Road Transport Corporation, it wins Asia's Best Brand Employer Award. The Karnataka State Road Transport Corporation, it has recently won Asia's Best Brand Employer Award for 2023 under the category of Organization with Innovative HR Practices. The brand KSRTC, it is not just a transport service, but also an emotion for most of the employees as well as the passengers. If we have a look at uh, its historical path, the Karnataka State Road Transport Corporation, it was inaugurated by the Mysore Road Transport Department in September of 1948 with 120 buses being on board. Ashok Gehloth, he launches free smartphone scheme in the state of Rajasthan. So in the poll bound state, uh, which uh, is uh, expected to have uh, the Vidhan Sabha elections or uh, the Legislative Assembly elections uh, in a couple of months. So under the Indira Gandhi smartphone Yojana, the state government will transport, transfer Rs. 6,800 to the e-wallet of a beneficiary through the direct benefit transfer. The beneficiary, after the completion of their KYC, which is Know Your Customer Process, they can then purchase a mobile phone of their choice in the camps which are going to be set up by the government. The chief minister said that the scheme was delayed due to the shortage of chips in the international market because of the entire COVID-19 pandemic. The chief minister further stated that under the second phase of the scheme, smartphones will be provided to 8 million women. Now, before I proceed, I have a question. Which state government recently was in news for its, uh, uh, its uh, legislation on the guaranteed urban and rural employment schemes? Please put down your answers in the comment section and also mention the name of that scheme or bill or act. Government to build research parks at eight IITs and ISC Bangalore. The Government of India, it has approved the establishment of the research parks at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore and uh, eight Indian Institute of Technology, which is IITs, as part of an initiative to foster scientific and technological advancements. The primary aim of these research parks, it is to bolster the research ecosystem and to promote collaboration between academia and industry. Apart from uh, the institute in Bangalore, the research parks will be set up at IIT Madras, IIT Bombay, IIT Khadakpur, Kanpur, Delhi, Guwahati, Hyderabad, and Gandhinagar. As stated by the government, these research parks at IIT Madras, Khadakpur, and Delhi, they're currently in operation, while the others, they will uh, uh, are nearing the completion, or they are in the stage of being completed. Parliament passes the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill. By now, we've done so many stories on this particular bill. So, uh, as we discussed in one of our recent TNA editorial segments also, the bill was uh, before the Rajya Sabha, and now the Rajya Sabha has passed the Digital Data Protection Bill 2023. The bill, it comes six years after the Supreme Court declared right to privacy as a fundamental right, it has provisions to curb the misuse of individuals' data by online platforms. I have a question, and again, I would request all of you to please put down your answers in the comment section. The Supreme Court declared right to privacy as a part of fundamental right. So which article is concerned here, and what is the name of the judgment? And also, uh, please uh, 
specify whether it was a constitution bench or which bench was it and who were the judges involved and how many opinion bases were furnished in the judgment. Now, uh, the union minister, who is uh, Ashwini Vaishnav, he stated that the bill, it gives new rights to people who use digital services and it lays down a lot of obligations on the private and the government entities around the collection and the processing of citizens' data. The bill also seeks to protect the privacy of Indian citizens while proposing a penalty of up to rupees 250 crore on entities for misusing and for failing to protect the digital data of individuals. This has brought us to the legal segment for today and first update comes from the High Court of Kerala. The Kerala High Court has recently held that it is mandatory for the magistrates to examine an accused who was tendered pardon under section 306 subsection 4 clause A of the CRPC prior to committing the case to the Sessions Court. Section 306 of the court, it deals with tendering pardon to an accomplice who turns an approver. An approver essentially is also an accused in the crime, the High Court stated, further adding that he has now agreed to provide details regarding the crime to aid the criminal proceedings in return for being tendered pardon. So let's say there were three, uh, three accused and uh, an accomplice is somebody who has accompanied the accused in the crime and uh, now he has turned an approver. So he has agreed to provide details regarding the crime. Why? In order to help the criminal proceedings. And in turn, he is tendered pardon. So this is the deal with an approver. So here the court has said that uh, magistrate, it is mandatory for a magistrate to examine the approver before committal of the case. Section 306, subsection 4, clause A provides that an approver shall be entitled, examined as a witness by the magistrate as well as in the subsequent trial. The name of the case is Suomoto versus the state of Kerala. Next update comes from the Honorable Apex Court. The Supreme Court has dismissed a petition filed by the National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, challenging the Calcutta High Court's judgment, which set aside the NHRC's decision to appoint its observers from the for the panchayat elections in the state of West Bengal. A division bench of the top court, it dismissed the SLP, finding that the interference by the NHRC undermined the autonomy and the independence of the State Election Commission, even though the NHRC had good intentions. Here, I am reminded of a question, which directive principle of state policy of uh, the Indian constitution, it provides for the establishment of panchayats, village panchayats, and also for giving them such power so as to enable them to function as uh, units of uh, uh, self-governing units at the rural level. Again, put down your answer in the comment section. Name of this particular case is uh, National Human Rights Commissions and others versus the West Bengal State Election Commission and others. And this has brought us to an end of our TNA. In case you want to get access to the free study materials that we curate or the TNA slides that have been used in this video, please feel free to join our Telegram channel. And for the same, you may scan the barcode here or click on the link which is given in the description. These are the two point of contacts in case you want to get in touch with Law Seco. And in the description, you may get access to the quiz link as well. Please go ahead and attempt the same. And also, don't forget to put down your answers in the comments. Thank you for being with us.